Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintageMachinery.org. Guys, I got a project for you today I think you'll enjoy. This is a, a Wilton Vice that actually belongs to a friend of mine, Andy Knowlton. Andy's helped me out in the shop a good bit over the years, uh, both here at home and out at the museum. And uh, he picked up a very nice uh, little Wilton Vice not too long ago, but it has a problem. Uh, seems like most things do, don't they? And it has to do with a little crack up here. And we're going to get that thing brazed up. So let me show you what's going on here and I will come up with a game plan. See you here, guys. I mean, Andy picked this uh, vice up. It looks like uh, it had the jaw was a little bit loose. It wasn't real tight, and someone went to pounding on the top of it with a hammer, and when it did, it transferred the shock down to this little lip on the bottom, and we've got a crack. It's not broken completely off, but it's broken pretty well down in here. Uh, you can kind of see on the bottom, it goes to about right back in here. And even on the top, uh, it's partially cracked right in there. So game plan here is, is where this is going to be a brazing job. Um, you know, I always get asked, why not weld it? This is cast iron. I'm not going to say welding cast iron is impossible, but it is a little bit tricky. It takes some special equipment to actually truly weld it. Uh, but brazing it is a is pretty common way of doing it. And the difference between welding and brazing is, is that welding you're actually melting all the metal together. With brazing you're putting a filler metal in there that binds to everything uh, and holds it together very well. And in the case of uh, what we're going to be doing, we're going to be using some bronze, uh, some uh, silicon bronze I believe is what we're going to be using for this. And um, I'm going to be brazing this, but instead of brazing it the traditional way with a, a flame torch, uh, we're going to use a TIG torch uh, to actually do the braze job here, which is kind of a new technique for me. I've been doing the flame brazing for many, many years, uh, but recently picked up a TIG machine, and we're going to give this a try. Uh, I've done some practice welds on cast iron or brazing on cast iron, and but this is going to be really my first job for real, so hopefully everything goes good. Before I do anything else, we're going to come in here and just kind of clean this thing up. I've got a twisted knot wire wheel on my grinder here, and we're just going to go ahead here. I got a little bit of, it looks like some paint, uh, but I want to get it complete, just as clean as I can get it, number one, get all the dirt, all the grease, all the grime, all the paint, everything off of here as I can, because that's all impurities that can get into this braze job when we start. So uh, let's clean it up as good as we can right around the area we're going to be working in. Next thing we want to do here is you see this little crack down in the bottom and I want to open that up and actually get it where I can get some braze to flow down in there uh, to fill that in really well. Uh, and to do that I'm going to use a little grinding wheel, actually a little cutoff wheel to go in there and just make a, a slot in there. We're going to be doing this all the way around so I'm going to do right here. I don't know if I can get on this face very well just because of the angle but we'll try to see what we can do there and also work across the bottom down here uh, just to open all those gaps up again. I'm just trying to give a place for my braze to go. All right, I've got a thin uh, cut off bit here. I had to take my guard off my grinder to get that in there. All right, you can look down in here and you can kind of see the groove that we've got cut out in there. That's where we're going to start at. And I've kind of got the vise positioned the way I want it uh, for that first uh, braze job to go in there. So one of the things that makes uh, working on cast iron so difficult is, is the material is a little bit on the brittle side, number one, and uh, you can really cause a lot of stress and fractures in the casting just by uh, heating and cooling it, particularly if you heat it or cool it quickly. Uh, so 
normally with a brazing job, what you're going to do with a torch is you're going to take the time to heat it up and get the whole part kind of warmed up. A lot of times people will even take these and put it in an oven, heat it up to about three or 400 degrees before they ever start uh, brazing on it. I don't have an oven out here in the shop, but uh, I think what I'm going to do is I am going to take the torch and uh, we're going to put it on here and try to get some heat in the in casting. I don't want to just heat up here on the top part I'm working on. I want to kind of get some heat throughout the entire casting and bring it up to temperature, a little bit on the slow side, not get in a big hurry. Uh, and I, I'm not trying to get it red hot. I'm not trying to get anything like that. I'm just trying to get it, you know, three, 400 degrees. And then we can come in here and start our brazing job uh, over here. And because we're not melting the cast iron with brazing, uh, we were just going to be flowing in that bronze. The bronze melts at a much lower temperature than the actual cast iron would. Uh, so anyway, that's, that's the goal here. I'm going to get my torch out and uh, we're going to start warming this piece up. Kind of got a rosebud uh, tip on here and uh, we're just going to take our time, heat it up and get it up a couple hundred degrees. Again, not trying to get in a hurry. I'm not trying to sit here and direct a bunch of heat in one area. We're trying to heat it up fairly even across the entire part. We'll be back in a little bit. All right, guys, I'm hitting this with my infrared thermometer, and we're reading a little over 300 degrees up here on the top. So uh, that should be a little bit of a preheat. Again, the idea here is just get some heat in there so that, you know, when we come in here with this TIG, we're going to be applying a tremendous amount of heat in a very small area. And I just want to have some heat already in there so things don't go crazy expanding and contracting uh, and causing the crack to be worse than what it already is. So let me get suited up here and we'll go ahead and start TIGging this. I'm going to go ahead and hit it with some uh, argon first. Kind of flush it out. We're not trying to melt metal here, guys. This isn't like normal welding. I'm just trying to get it hot enough to get this bronze to kind of go down in there and we'll seal this hole in. I'm really having a hard time seeing this, guys. I'm trying to do it where you guys can watch and I can do it, but I may have to get in front of the camera here some because I'm having a hard time seeing what I'm doing and that is not looking pretty. And we got a bead in there. It's not the prettiest I've ever done. It's kind of an awkward uh, spot to be in here, but, and I got some soot, guys. That's mostly from the impurities in this cast iron. Um, that's just cast iron welding right there, brazing. Let's uh, see if we can clean that up a little bit. I'm gonna have to get in here and, of course, mill this out later on. But hopefully that uh, at least got enough material down there in that bottom that uh, it's going to close that up. All right, I'm going to flip this over and we'll continue on working around. That went a lot better, guys. Just not as hard to get into. So guys, we're through uh, brazing it, and what I got now is just this thing wrapped up in a little welding blanket, 
and we'll let it cool down nice and slow and even, again trying to avoid any uh, stress fractures from occurring. Well, it may not have started out looking very pretty, but I think it looks all right right now. Uh, I've come in here and ground, and I got in here with some files and stuff and just kind of cleaned down. And it looks to me like we've got a good brazed joint down in there. Yes, you know, we got a couple little small inclusions in there, but I'm telling you guys, when you're dealing with this cast iron, it's just so much junk in it, uh, that so much trash that comes out of it. It's hard to get a just perfect uh, braze job. But I'm very happy with that. I think Andy's gonna be happy with it as well. Um, on the side over here, uh, that cleaned up real nice. And then, let's see, I can get this on the bottom when you guys can see it. So um, down there on the bottom again, I just got in there with the grinder and it looks like it's, it's, it's completely bound all the way down in there. So uh, I'm happy with that as well. You know, as far as What's really left to do here, you know, I think, and Andy's got a milling machine, so he can do this, but I would probably set this up on the milling machine and put an end mill in here and just kind of hit the face of this and, and probably hit the bottom of this too and just get a nice sharp corner down there and just kind of clean up, particularly the back side where that, that, um, that jaw was gonna go on the bottom, not worried as much, uh, but make sure we got a nice flat surface back there. It feels pretty flat. Uh, but I think it would be good just to, just to shim a few thousandths off of there. Uh, I think that'll go a long way toward kind of cleaning this thing up and making it ready. Uh, but again, I'm gonna leave that for Andy. Uh, he just asked me if I'd help him get it brazed up and uh, I think we've got that part done.